All right, everyone, welcome to part three of this series of videos on what to do when you launch a new website. And so we've made a checklist so you can go through step by step, whether you're launching a new website or relaunching a site to make sure that nothing is missing and that you don't have errors or um, things that are gonna cause you to lose traffic and thus revenue. So we covered a bunch in part one and part two. I'll put the links down to those in the description below this video, but let's just get to where we left off last time and continue our walkthrough um, on that. So the last thing we did last time was just check to make sure your RSS feed is working. And so today this sounds pretty simple, um, but it can cause you real problems if you forget to do it. You just wanna make sure that your privacy policy and your terms of service are in place so for example, let's go to our, our agency website. Let's scroll down to the footer. And you will see here that our privacy policy is in place. And when you click it, it actually works. Um, that's important because several of the things you might be running, um, AdWords, Facebook ads, things like that, um, any kind of contest will require you to have a privacy policy. So just make sure that is in place. It's pretty simple. Um, if you need to get some legal help, do that. Um, if, you, if you're if you in Europe um, or other countries, they've there's some new restrictions that have come onto place. Um, so just make sure you check that so that you're compliant there. All right, the next thing is super important and we pick up clients for marketing all the time that don't have this in place and it's, crazy if you don't have this in place because Google's given you free tools to measure the success and any problems your website might have. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you have your Google Analytics code in the header um, and you'll probably need your web person to do that if, if you're DIY in it. Um, you could do it on your own um, but basically when you go in if you want to add a new site you're in your analytics profile if you don't have any accounts here you won't see this but you go to admin and then you're going to create an account and then it'll walk you through how to do it basically it's going to give you some code that you have to put in the header section of your website the easiest way to do this is when you create that account it's going to give you some code that it wants to, you to install in the header. The fastest way to do that on most themes is to go into appearance in your dashboard. Click editor. It'll warn you you're going to make some edits. That's fine. You're going to scroll down here till you find the theme header. And then as I scroll through this, see here's the head code that starts it right and here's the close of the header so it has to be between these two things so what I would do is just hit put my cursor here hit enter and then you're gonna paste that code in and hit update file and then analytics will talk to your site and it'll start pulling in data it's valuable um, we'll do a separate post on analytics and video but it's going to tell you how many page views you have, um, what the demographics of page visitors are, all that kind of stuff. The next thing you want to do is also do this with Search Console. Same kind of method. You're going to click Add a Property. It's going to give you some code. You're going to do the same thing and put it in the header on the site. Here's the great thing about having Search Console. You can see how many people clicked on your website. And then if you open this report, you can see your total number of impressions that you had. You can also see what words people are using to search and if they clicked through or not, which is very valuable on creating other content, AdWords, those kind of things. So you just want to make sure you have that on your site. The other thing it's going to show you is if Google's having any trouble indexing your content. Um, if there's um, some problems, you can see there's no errors on this page, but it'll let you know that. You might have intentionally blocked those pages or whatever. The other thing you're going to want to do is to um, 
give it your sitemap. In WordPress, this is typically if you have a Yoast plugin or SEO plugin or any other kind of thing that's generating that. There's a plugin called Google Sitemap Creator. There's a ton of them. But it's typically going to be forward slash sitemap.xml. So you're going to enter that right here, sitemap.xml, submit it, and then Google's going to tell you if it reads it or not. This is important because as your site updates, it's going to tell Google Search Console, hey, there's a new page on the site, which will speed up indexing and other things like that. Also, as part of this process of making sure you communicate well with Google, um, we typically like to go to an SEO tester. There's a bunch, but like, yeah, local site checker. And literally, you go to the site. You type in your URL, and this one you type in a keyword you're trying to rank on, and your email, and it's going to generate a report, um, and it's going to tell you anything that's wrong with your site. Speed load, um, things that can't get read, pages that can't get read because they're blocked, um, and so you can address all those. It's just a good thing to do in the process. Um, number 16, get some Bing love. Bing's important. It's influ influential in search um, by voice. So you want to be in tip-top shape on Bing. It works almost exactly like we just did with Google. You go into Bing Webmaster Tools. It'll give you a snippet of code. You put it in the header of your site. It'll verify it, and then you're good to go there. Number 17, if you have a Facebook page and you're going to run any kind of ads to it, you're going to make sure that your Facebook pixel, which you can get inside your Facebook account, is also put in that same header section where we put the Google Analytics code, the Google Search Console code, the Bing code. You're going to cut and paste this code into your header. The reason it's important is if you run ads on Facebook, it's going to be able to measure conversions a lot better. Number 18, make sure your SSL is valid. Going forward in 2018, if your site doesn't have this S on it, it means you don't have a security certificate or an SSL installed on it. Chrome and other browsers are starting to mark your site unsecure. Now, what does that mean? It doesn't really mean anything unless you collect information or money from people. However, it does create an impression on the viewer that, hey, this company doesn't have all their stuff together because I see their site doesn't look secured. So you want to install an SSL on the site. And then in most hosts, you can make the HTTP version of your site automatically revert to HTTPS. We use Get Flywheel. And there's a button that you click when you host with them, and it'll make, if you have an SSL in place, which they give you for free, it's another reason we love Get Flywheel, that you click this button, and anytime anyone comes and uses the HTTP address, it automatically redirects them to the HTTPS address. That's also good for search engines. Um, also, we highly suggest number 19, when you launch your site and it gets up, do a local Mac, uh, master backup of the entire site, like to a hard drive that you have access to. Um, and then again, we love Get Flywheel as our host, and one of the reasons we do is it backs up the site every night. Um, and so literally, if we have an issue, we can go back to the night we knew it was working, click a button, and bam, the site repopulates just as it was working that night. Um, also, Get Flywheel handles all your security needs. If you're hosting on some of the other hosts, you probably want a software protection system like WordFence, which is a plugin on your site, and go through the full setup procedure on that. You can even block countries that you don't serve, which is great because it'll foil hacker attempts from some of those countries that, that tend to um, launch the hacker attacks. But know what kind of hosting backup and hosting security is in place. Don't assume on that one. Number 20, if e-commerce is involved, you have want to have done this before the site launches, but even after it goes live, hiccups can happen in that transition. So the moment the site goes live, 
go on, put in some orders, make sure the orders are being received. In other words, you can see them in your dashboard and they're getting notifications that they're coming in. Two, that the shipping amounts are still properly being calculated. And three, payment is being accepted and received. And the way you do that is you just put in some orders, use your own credit card, um, pick where you want it shipped to so you can kind of calculate the price, make sure the whole process works, do the purchase to make sure that the payment works, and then after the fact, you can always cancel it out. But we do several of those and we use multiple size packages, multiple categories, just to make sure we have no hiccup if it's an e-commerce site. And then um, number 21 is catalyze your launch. Celebrate that new website or that relaunch. Um, put it on Facebook, put it on your social media feeds. One of the best things you can do is write a syndicated press release. We like this um, service called Press Synergy to do that. But if you'll put out a press release that says, we launched a new site, here's a URL of it, and you syndicate it out through one of these major syndicating um, networks, your backlink profile will jump up quickly because every one of those press releases where it's syndicated to is going to contain a backlink to your site. So that's a way to jumpstart your indexing, get your site indexed quicker, and to create some buzz about it. Most of those services are not expensive. They'll even help you write the press release. And then of course, if you get stuck on any of these things or some of it sounds too technical, reach out to us. We'll be glad to help you. We want you to be successful with your website. This checklist is one of the things that ensures that happens. Any kind of technical element that you get stuck on, reach out to us at Moon and Al Marketing. Our website is moonandal.com. We will be glad to help you. Um, we want to see you be successful with your website, see your business grow. So that's a wrap on our 21 point checklist on when you launch or relaunch a website. We hope this has been helpful for you. This is Jordan Fowler with Moon and Owl Marketing.